Vareem. This is Triple M's Rush Hour with JB and Bill on the Triple M app and on your radio. Now, Jim, let me introduce this man. I played with Go this on. man, and he is a superstar. Have a look at the resume. No 274 mm-hmm. games for the Cats, four All-Australians, four Geelong Best and Ferris, AFL Hall of Fame, Geelong Hall of Fame. He's in the team of the century at the Cats as a Ruck Rover and mm-hmm. coaching now, coaching the VFL at Collingwood and doing a great job there. Should have won a Brownlow medal, Jim. He runner-up yep. once and came third in the Brownlow three times. Belted a few blokes, probably. Uh, <laughs> played in four grand finals like myself and lost four grand finals. But he is a superstar. His name is Gary Buddha Hocking. Welcome to the Rush Hour, Buddha. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. Hey, mate, how are you? How are you going? Because I see you were stood down like a, a lot of, well, nearly every assistant coach. And now you're uh, working on a farm out at Ceres, just out of Geelong. And let me tell you, I know you, Buddha. You've never been on the land ever in your life. Yeah, no, uh, I've, I've uh, been able to get out there, Billy, and do a bit of landscaping, uh, run, run the garbage and do things like that, even when we were playing. Like, yes. you were you were loafing around Cudia uh, <laughs> Park there on a, on a tractor. Yeah, I was. <laughs> uh, cleaning, cleaning, uh, picking up weeds and doing all those sort of things. So, you know, I just followed suit. You were a great role model. Oh, yeah, you're right, because uh, back in the day, Jim, we used to play, uh, we played, obviously, but we also worked. And, and you used yes. to be a Garbo with the Geelong City Council, you stop one day. This is a great story. Where he stops, he has a kick with the kids in the in the street because they all know it's Buddha, and he rolls his ankle and missed about three weeks. Yeah, it was a bit of a goose. I jumped off thinking I'll show these kids how to take a uh, a bit of a good hanger, and uh, <laughs> I said, "Hey, hey, young fella, kick it over here." Jumped off the back of the truck, yeah. um, got a little bit of a run up, came down crashing on the curb, Ooh. and I was out for uh, five weeks. So. Five weeks. Uh, yeah, Malcolm. Malcolm wasn't happy, but Peter Riccardi played his first game, so that was wasn't too bad. Something good came of it. Yeah. Hey, Buddha, we've had the great pleasure of recalling the '89 Grand Final. Oh, oh, we've got the '94 oh, oh, Prelim yes. Final coming up to recall, and you're a star in uh, both of those games, oh. I know. And the '89 Grand Final, I, I loved your physicality. <laughs> you were as physical on that day as Bill wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, let me just sort of uh, just go back. I mean, I was pretty ordinary in the 89 grand final. We did start uh, a little bit too aggressive, yeah. but that was all that was all in the planning. And I was naturally a, a gr- aggressive sort of fellow. I didn't need too much to tip me over. No. But um, obviously, the, you know, first grand final, Hawthorne going back to back, very experienced team. But, I mean, we just gave them too much of a start. We didn't play our style of footy. And that's one of the things when you look back, had we just sort of maybe played our way earlier, the result would have been different. But, um, look, great respect um, for the Hawks boys. I still see Dipper and Dermy. Still want to try and knock them out because I still stir them up, but <laughs> stir us up about it. But um, Malcolm Blight used to always go on about Billy. Look, if you could change one thing, JB, I reckon. Yep. Uh, of the 89 grand final, or probably all the grand finals we played in, if I, people asked me if I changed one thing, <laughs> what would it be? And I said, well, what? one person... One person in the forward line, JB. Oh, Ablett. Would, Buddha, please. It would have been Billy out. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, we got – Bud, I'm not – I'd forgotten – I knew how physical the game was, but right. I'd forgotten the details of it because it's 89, a long time ago. We got halfway through the last quarter before I realised that Bill at that point had touched the ball twice. <laughs> <laughs> no, he had a shocker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was a team player, Bud, and me and Ablett kicked 11 between us. The greatest decoy, I reckon. Um, <laughs> but no, he had a shocker. He, he had an absolute shocker. He was no good on the ground. If he didn't mark it, there was no, there was no defence. There was no defence. So we were always, we went into the game with six forwards, but we knew we were only playing with five, really. <laughs> At least I didn't even give away 15 free kicks in the first quarter. Yeah, like, correct, Billy, correct. Yeah. Mate, well, no wonder we were down by six goals in the first quarter. Buddha belted every Hawthorne player. And then he was going to run over the interchange bench to hit them too. But I tell you now, all seriousness, uh, Jim. Yes. Tough players like Buddha oh, and yeah. aren't skillful, right? They got no skills. <laughs> but he was both tough and skillful. I reckon he's the number one most toughest skillful player in the comp. Do you reckon you are, Bud? This will be good. Oh, I don't think so, Billy. Who's um, better? Well, I think Michael Voss was. Um... You know, a pretty tough player and very skillful sort of player, but I, I appreciate the kind words, Billy. But um, well, you were, yeah. nah. Well, like I hey, said, I appreciate, I appreciate it. But 
I want you on this station every week because no one has uh, put a snapshot around Bill's career better than that previous sentence you rolled out, and uh, I absolutely love it. Now, if you can stick around, there's more that we need to discuss with this superstar. And, Bill... If you talk about exiting that trailer, what, if you the bring hot dog that up, when he fell no, no, no. no. <laughs> and Rabbits, what about get us to, what about get us to no, no, it's, whiskers? <laughs> Bill, he'll belt you through the phone. It's the rush hour, on Triple M. It's the rush hour, on Triple M. JB, Bill, it's all thanks to Reem and Gary Hocking, our very special oh, guest. And now, and magnificent is it to speak to this uh, superstar, four yeah. to, uh, four-time All Australian. Yeah. We know now, Buddha. I just yes. want to put something right on the table oh, and go. make it very, very clear. The 11 years I did the footy show, yep. that vision of you slipping <laughs> as you exited, I did not want that played oh, once. Listen to him. Well, can, I, can I just correct that, uh, JB? I mean, the, the 11 years. Can you put poor in there? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Never listen to Bud. Now, what happened there, Buddha? Because it's a great shot of you. You got a hot dog. You were walking down the stand, and you slipped and fell over. It's the best bit of vision you'll ever see. But every time you come on, you used to text me, so I'm going to belt you, Bill. Uh, what happened there? Well, I still text you, really, because you're still playing. But um, <laughs> no, I was at a, I was at a, uh, at a at a high school, and I was doing like a cooking show, and I'd been. Uh, I'd been on, uh, you know, the filming for a uh, quarter of um, a number of hours. I didn't take anything to eat. So, banger, Robert Harvey had the, the banger hot dog trailer. So, oh. it, it's rocked up. And I thought, oh, I might be able to sneak a little bit of a hot dog in here. Yeah. All of a sudden, I've gone up to get one. Uh, I've come back and I thought, as soon as I get to the edge, you'll see me there. I take a little bit of a pause. <laughs> All right, I take a little bit of a pause. There's a trickle of rain. Yeah. <laughs> and down you go. There's a little bit of a trickle of rain. I'm thinking, this is going to be slippery, so take your time, your son. So the first step, I was down. Then what about me trying to cover it up? Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus. How funny. stiff. How stiff. You fall over and they capture it. And then a goose like you, Billy. <laughs> See, that's a great power of TV. I can just keep showing that Buddha and everyone giggles. Yeah. Everyone giggles at it. They love it. Absolutely. No, it's like a bit of bit of fun. No, so. exactly, mate. Well, and I tell you what, when you changed your name to Whiskers, and you did do it, you actually changed your name, didn't you? You did it by Depol. Yeah, I had to go to Melbourne and uh, sign all the papers. So I had to drive up there and change all the all the uh, all the name by um, deed pole. The players had to call me Whiskers during the week um, at training. So, you know, Whiskers here, handball Whiskers, kick it over here, Whiskers. You know, that sort of thing. And then on, on the Monday after the game, um, I had to go back and change it back to um, to my original name again. So uh, it was a bit of fun. The club was in a bit of strife, yeah. really. They uh, overpaid you for a number of years. Um, oh, yeah. No, no. You, a, I got the team sheet that has handed in before the game, Jim. I've got it yeah. at home, and it's just got number 32. It's just got whiskers. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, you did. You helped out the club. You helped out, I reckon, a lost dog's home or a cat's home or something, didn't you? And and you got a little bit for yourself. No, no, no mayonnaise for me, Billy. It was all for the club. So um, oh. I, I remember going out, and I had to uh, I had to sit in a cat pen uh and do all those sort of things, you know, for the for, for the home shelter. And I'm a, I'm 182 and weigh about 85, and I'm trying to get in like a little pigeonhole. And they're trying to say, you know, relax and do this and do that. But um, if any of you guys have got cats, or if there's anyone listening, I've got a, a truckload of whiskers sitting in the garage. It needs to be Imagine putting my head. Yeah. Putting my head on a can of cat food. I mean, how many are you going to sell, really? No, not a lot. <laughs> not a lot. Hey, Buddha, answer me this. I, I reckon I've done, well, I, I shudder to think, you have to be 50 plus sportsman's lunches and dinners with Bill, yep. where he stands on stage, he, he bores the audience with the same yeah. crap every single time. Firstly, how he belted Gary Ablett yeah. and knocked him on his ass in Were the gym. Were you there, Buddha? That was true. He, uh, he actually bought some carrots <laughs> to, uh, to seen his nose, oh, and it was. Uh, the eyes lit up, but uh, Billy, I think he backed away then, Bill. But no, he, but I he, did drop him, didn't no, I? You, you did, you did. I'll, uh, I'll <laughs> thank agree you, with Buddha. Go on, JB. <laughs> yes, thank you. See, but that happened, Jim. I don't tell lies. I, I can't. Well, it, let me ask you this one then, Buddha. Uh, I've heard Tony Shaw, the great Tony Shaw, tell a story about one of his teammates getting a lackey band around a whole wad of money and actually tying a kid's <laughs> boot up with it. Yep. Bill adapted it to Gary Ablett and has been telling that story for twenty years. Did that actually happen? Uh, no, it's just one of Billy's surfies, I reckon. He just tries to... <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, you, you, you go back, JB, and say that uh, you know he bores a lot of people at these yep. luncheons. Well, he bored he a lot of our he bored a lot of our supporters for many years too. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, I want him on every week. I what want him on every he's week. He's turned into a comedian, <laughs> fair dickers. I can't believe it. He never used to say boo. Um, but no, all uh, about actions when I played, Bill. All about action. Yeah, you were. You were. Who, that. You were can I ask you this there for what three games and then didn't like it, did you? Uh, correct. I gave it up. Yeah, uh, didn't like it. Did you? I wasn't. I wasn't a bloke that was out there too much, and it used to worry me a lot about you know what I had to say before the game and that sort of thing. Oh, but yeah. I mean, hmm. I really got the captaincy. I think when Ezzy and, and Geisha and that were there, just because of the way I sort of um, played, the way I played and that sort of thing, and the boys would hopefully follow. So I mean, the other talking bit was I think. Um, well, I must. I worked this out, Billy. I mean, I gave it up. And yep. They put three in. They put Ablett. Yep. Ken Hinckley and Barry Stoneham in. So I looked at that and thought, I must be going pretty good. <laughs> They've got to replace me with three. <laughs> and and you never used to drink. You weren't a drinker ever, were you? I had a couple of cheeky ones, Bill, but I thought that the way that I played yeah. week to week, I just couldn't sort of uh, afford to, you know, get out there and have a few froffies with you and the boys mm. and that sort of thing. And um, I sort of, I sort of kept away from that a little bit, although off season, I used to sort of let the hair down a little bit. Yeah. Hey, Buddha, ask, let me yep. ask you this. Who was the toughest opponent? I know Anthony Stevens, when you talk to him, talks very fondly of the games he played on you where the two of you used to punch hell out of each other. Who was the opponent that you found the toughest? Yeah, I think uh, Steve-O, was, Steve-O was a really difficult um, player to play on. I've got huge respect for him. Um, but also I think Tony Liberatore was pretty tough as well. Mm. You know, like he used to fight and scrap and... Uh, you know, like there was no way that you come off the ground without a bruise or, uh, you know, a little bit of blood trickling from the the eyebrow. So he played for keeps, but he, he would probably be the toughest, yeah. And uh, you're coaching now, coaching the VFL side at Collingwood. Coached in Yone Wright, Peel Thunder, the Geelong Falcons, uh, South Adelaide, Port Adelaide for a few games. And so you're right into the coaching and you love it. And what, uh, what's next, Buddha? Because uh, you're going all right in it. Well, I'm just enjoying my time at Collingwood and I think that... Um, Learning from uh, from Bucks, you know, Sandoz Air Harves is there, uh, Matty Boyd. We've got a really good crew. So, um, you know, I'm just taking my time with it, Billy. Uh, mm. Just building up the experience, you know, and who knows down the track something might form a way. Um, I'm interested in, uh, you know, becoming a senior coach, but I know that I don't want to get in there and only last, you know, a couple of seconds. Um, yep. I want to be, I'm going to be really prepared. And if that opportunity doesn't come along, um, I've still... Uh, enjoyed what I've been able to do and pass on, you know, some experience and a few tips to the players. But, you know, the, the Collingwood program at the moment is just um, such a great place to be in. Yeah. And it's well led by, you know, by Bucks. He's really in tune with the game. You know, like he's he's really changed a bit over the time. He's come out of his shell, you know, and you probably see that in the way that, um, you know, he, he puts himself uh, out in the media in the way that he talks now. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. got the players on board and they're playing really good footy. He has. Geelong and AFL royalty, this man, yeah. and as honest as anyone's ever been about <laughs> the very ordinary career of Bill Brownless. So, Buddha, <laughs> any time you want to come on, you are welcome. Thanks, boys. Good, good on, on, you. on you, Buddha. It's the Rush yeah. Hour on Triple M. Chris Gullin from the Melbourne North is up next.